Hey everyone, I'm Rob and welcome to the test drive. Today, I'm driving the 2018 Chevy Silverado and today, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know about this truck. Let's go. Now the Silverado is Chevy's full-size pickup truck. It's mechanically identical to the GMC Sierra and it competes in a highly competitive space against the F-150 and the Ram. You also have the Tundra and the Titan, but definitely the three American manufacturers um, really have that space locked down and are constantly competing against each other, constantly trying to redesign their trucks and get an edge on the other one. And the Silverado has done very well in this space. Now, the F-150 is still the best-selling pickup truck for over 40 years um, in the United States, but that said, uh, the Silverado still does have a good amount of market share and is a strong competitor in that space. So I'm going to show you around the interior and the exterior of this truck, talk about a couple specifications and then we're going to take this on the road and drive it. I'm also going to put a GoPro on my head so you can see from a first person point of view what it's like to drive the 2018 Silverado. Now there are several different trim levels available for the 2018 Silverado. It starts with the WT which is the base level trim, very much a work truck and then you get up through a couple different trim levels and you end up at the high country, which is the top level trim. Now the one that I'm driving is an LT, so it's essentially a mid-level trim. Now there are a lot of options that can vary. You can get a more loaded LT. Mine is definitely more at the base level, but I'll show you a lot of different options that you can get in this video. So we're gonna start with the exterior of the 2018 Silverado. Now I love the look of this front end here. It's so aggressive. They redesigned this kind of in the middle of the cycle and I really love what they did. You have the um, daytime running lamp strip here and overall it's just a very mean, aggressive front end. Now the Silverado that I'm driving is a double cab. So you have basically a smaller back seat, a smaller door than the crew cab, but you do have four doors. You also get a standard size bed with this, which is kind of nice versus the crew cab. You initially get a, what they call the short box, and then you can actually get um, a longer uh, bed as an option instead. That said, I do like the look from the side. Now, the one that I'm driving has these 17 inch standard rims that are what comes standard in the LT trim, but you can get a couple different options. And then when you get into the LTZ and the high country, which are the more luxurious options, then um, you know you can get some even nicer looking rims. Now I have to say from the rear, I again like the look of this truck. Love that you have the steps in the corners of the bumpers to kind of help you get up into the bed of the truck. And yes, today I am using this truck to do truck stuff. Also standard in the LT trim is this soft opening tailgate. So it's nice that, you know, as soon as you open it, it kind of opens gently and then you can shut it. Um, very sturdy as you might imagine, obviously in a full size pickup truck. And that's something that I noticed about this truck is that everything was really built well. Everything's very solid, the tours, the tailgate, the hood. Um, very well built, but also built with comfort in mind, uh, not just being a bulletproof uh, piece of machinery. Now, while the LT trim is not necessarily the most luxurious trim level, it's still pretty comfortable. Now, you don't get leather seats standard in the LT. You can add leather seats to an LT, but it is something more commonly found in LTZ and high country trims, obviously coming standard in those, but still a very comfortable interior. This cloth looks pretty good. It's sturdy. Steering wheel here as well is very comfortable. Feels really nice at nine and three. It is leather wrapped and the materials in the cabin are decent, I guess. I mean, you do have 
quite a bit of hard plastic, although this is a truck, and everything in here looks nice. Everything feels like it's high quality. All the buttons, you do have some leather wrapped surfaces, some leather trim, vinyl trim throughout the vehicle as well. Now the LT trim comes standard as a six seater model, so you do have a middle seat in here as well that functions as either a middle seat when it's up or as a armrest center console when it's down. Now while because this is a double cab, it doesn't have a full size back seat with the full size rear doors, you still have a decent amount of space back here. I mean, I'm six feet tall, I'm sitting behind myself, and yeah, my knees are kind of pushing into the seat here, but it's not bad. I mean, you have enough space where you can be back here and be okay. I also love the fact that these seats fold up very easily to give you additional cargo room if you don't want to use this as a back seat for passengers. Now while the proximity key and push button start is not standard in the LT trim, you can and do get that feature in the higher level models. I just have a regular Chevy key along with a regular remote. Uh, remote start does not come standard, although you can get it in the LT trim. And there are a bunch of options that are available in this truck uh, that are very minimal cost. A lot of the packages are not very expensive, and you can easily add some really nice features to even the LT trim level of the Silverado. Now you do get a column shifter here, which I like. And you get a column shifter actually in every Silverado from this generation. So I like that. I don't really care for rotary dials or, you know, even a console shifter. I mean, it's kind of nice, I guess, in some higher end F-150s. But at the end of the day, I think for a pickup truck, column shifter is probably best, but this is definitely an ongoing debate in the truck community. Now, under the hood of this Silverado is a 5.3 liter V8 that produces 355 horsepower, 383 pound-feet of torque. However, there are two other engine options in the light-duty versions of the Silverado. Obviously, you have the Duramax diesel in the 2500 and 3500 HD, which are the heavy-duty models of the Silverado, but you have three different choices for the light-duty 1500 level uh, Silverados. Now the base engine option in the Silverado and even in the LT trim is a 4.3 liter naturally aspirated V6 produces 285 horsepower, 305 pound-feet of torque. Wouldn't necessarily be my engine of choice, although it's a good engine and I mean it does produce decent power if you're not planning on towing uh, very heavy items and that type of thing, but I think the 5.3 liter V8 is a pretty good option. And you also have a 6.2 liter V8, which produces more power, puts out 420 horsepower and 460 pound feet of torque. I just love the sound of a V8. Now you can get this truck in either two wheel drive or four wheel drive. I have the four wheel drive version that I'm driving today. And one thing that I like about it, even though it's not really that necessary in a pickup truck, is the fact that you have a four auto mode. So instead of just two high, four high, four low, you also have a four auto mode that will distribute power evenly and make this function more like an all wheel drive vehicle. This truck also gets decent fuel economy, 16 miles per gallon in the city, 22 on the highway, really not bad for a full size V8 pickup truck. And this engine really puts out a good amount of power. I obviously wasn't able to do like a towing test or anything with it, but just in normal driving with a empty or almost empty bed, this truck really with the 5.3 liter V8, it's great. I mean, it keeps up extremely well in traffic. It's actually pretty quick when you put the pedal to the floor. Um, and it's just, it really drives nicely. It also has a pretty soft ride for being a pickup truck. I mean, you don't feel that many bumps and it really rides pretty smoothly. It's very comfortable to drive on a long trip. You do get a decent amount of body roll in this truck, but it's not bad. I mean, <laughs> it's it, it really corners pretty decently for a pickup truck, a vehicle that is not meant to corner well at all. 
<laughs> I also love that when you step on it, even with the traction control on, it still lets you spin the rear tires and have some fun with it. It's just, that's interesting. I thought it would just lock up the throttle and it didn't. You do some pretty fun burnouts in this thing, especially since so much of the weight is in the front since it's a pickup truck. And I, I do love that V8 sound. There are also a bunch of technology features that you can get in the Silverado. You can get blind spot monitoring and other safety technology, lane keeping and forward collision detection, rear parking assist. I mean, there's so many features you can get in the higher level trims, but even in this LT trim, at the base level of this trim, you do get a eight inch infotainment screen that also has a backup camera and has some really nice functionality with Apple CarPlay and Android. Android Auto. Now the one that I'm driving doesn't have its own navigation system built in, but you can get that as an option for only $495. So I think that is a really nice, very easy upgrade. But that said, you don't really need that with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I was using Apple CarPlay basically the entire time driving this truck and just using the navigation system from my phone projected onto the infotainment screen. I also really like the fact that you get two glove boxes in here. I think in a truck, it's just nice because you have additional storage and just makes it even more useful. I mean, why not? You also have a nice screen in between the tachometer and the speedometer that gives you a bunch of vehicle information, so I do like that. If I was buying this truck, I would definitely get the LT Plus package. It's only $1,000, and it gives you the ability to roll down the rear window and rear window defogging, rear park assist, adjustable pedals. Not that those things are necessarily critical, but I think for $1,000, having all the rear window controls is definitely worth it. So I hope you enjoyed this review of the 2018 Chevy Silverado. I'm Rob. This is the test drive. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about the video and this truck and what it competes against. And please consider subscribing to my channel. It does help me make more videos and it makes you eligible for all the giveaways that we have going on, which I always want to have a giveaway going on on the channel. We do have one going on right now as well. So again, thanks for taking this test drive with me and I'll talk to you soon.